All right, so we just finished talking about compilation, which is this process of taking your source code and transforming it, in this case, uh, into something called Java bytecode. And we talked about some of the errors that the compiler can catch. And in general, here's the principle. The more errors the compiler can catch, the better. So I, I use this analogy, I just sort of came up with this analogy of sort of like going to a restaurant, right? So you go to a restaurant, you're the user. You sit down at a table and you know, there's a kitchen in the back somewhere. And at some point someone brings food out to you and you put a bite into your mouth. What's the worst thing that you can think of that might happen in that moment, right? Think of, you know, the food that tastes terrible, right? Or it's cold or undercooked or maybe even dangerous to eat, right? That is the equivalent of code crashing in front of an actual real user. And we want to avoid that whenever we can. And so part of the idea is that there's this step where the food's being prepared in the kitchen before it gets to your table. And the more quality control we can do at that point, the less likely it is that you're going to be served something that's not good. And so when you go to a really good restaurant, they actually have people back in the kitchen who are examining the food before it comes out to your table. It doesn't happen in every restaurant, right? But there are restaurants that have someone who's in charge of, you know, looking, examining, they're not going to taste it, but you know, they get good at sort of looking at it, examining it, making sure that it's safe, making sure that it's warm, making sure that it's properly cooked, making sure that it looks correct based on what the dish is supposed to be like before you eat it, right? And the better they are, that's the compiler, right? That's in my analogy. The better the compiler is at doing that, the less likely it is that you're gonna get something unpleasant on your plate. Um, so in this case, you know, the Kotlin compiler is actually quite intelligent. It knows how to check your code for all sorts of mistakes, and it tries to help you avoid common problems. Um, and the goal is that, you know, when we run your code in the playground, we do both steps side by side, but there's a huge difference between the two problems that can happen, right? The errors that happen at runtime are much, much more problematic, right? Because they typically mean, you know, a compiler error is something that the developer has to fix right away, whereas a runtime error is something that happens in front of a user. It's the plate that makes it to the table with bad food on it. We just don't want that to happen. Um, so let's see an example of a, of a runtime error. So I'm gonna go back to the same piece of code that we've been working with. Um, and, you know, the thing about Kotlin is, with the simple example, it's actually really hard to get it to do something wrong, but there are some ways, right? Um, so let's talk about some runtime errors. Um, so a, a classic runtime error is bad array indexes, right? And, and here's an example. So I'm gonna say uh, int array of, and I'll say one, two, four, and then I'll do array three is equal to five, uh, or eight, okay? So, sorry, uh, int array of. Um, and so this is like a, a classic runtime error. Um, and so let's compile this. Now, what I want to point out is that this code is going to compile. Um, this code will compile. The compiler, now you might wonder, like why can't the compiler check for errors like this? And, and that's a great question. There's some really deep reasons why this is a very difficult problem to solve. It seems easy when we're looking at it. It's like, wait, I just created the array and therefore it's pretty obvious that that's a bad index. But you'll see the compiler compiled the code. There was no problem, right? So, so again, that, that person in the back of the kitchen looked at the food and said, this is fine, right? So the compiler said, sure, right? Um, what's gonna happen when we run this code? It's going to crash, right? And you'll see it crashes with this array index out of bounds exception that at least to us looking at the code was totally predictable because the size of array is three, therefore three is not a valid index for the array. Uh, okay, great. Uh, so, so that's one example. Let me try to give you another example using null. And this is actually hard with Kotlin because Kotlin's actually very good with null. So let's create a nullable uh, string variable uh, and we'll set it to null. And then we'll try to do something with it just using an unsafe operator. Right? So I'll try to print the length. I just actually just, we just actually did this example. So you probably can see how this is going to go. The Kotlin compiler, one of the focuses of Kotlin as a language is on null safety. And so the Kotlin compiler is very, very good at determining when a variable can be null and uh, 
you know, refusing to compile the code when it sees that I'm trying to do something unsafe, okay? And so uh, there are, and, and actually the Kotlin compiler is quite good at this, right? So if I say if s not equal to null, then print the length of s, um, try to compile this, you'll see that this uh, code, I think this code will compile, we'll find out. This code will compile. And the reason is that it's actually completely safe. Why is it safe? Because I only enter this if statement if s is not null. And so the, the Kotlin compiler is actually quite intelligent. This is a, a feature called flow typing, where it knows that the only way that I can get inside this if statement is if s is not null. Therefore, it's safe on line four to access the length of s without using one of the, the, the safe uh, null operators that Kotlin provides. But let's go back to do this, right? Let's, uh, sorry, let's uh, run, uh, compile the code. Um, and now it's not going to compile. So one of the options that uh, Kotlin allows us, so, you know, Kotlin is trying to be helpful here, but there are some times in your code where you know better than it does, right? So there may be some reason that you know that a particular variable that Kotlin has marked as nullable can't be done at that particular point. Um, and so here's what you can do. You can use what's called the, uh, the what does it call it? The non-null asserted operator. And this operator, so exclamation point in general in programming is a character that's designed to call your attention to something. And when you put two of them back to back, it's like, whoa, 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 hold on. The reason why this is the format of this is because it's designed to draw your attention to the fact that you're doing something unsafe. So Kotlin allows you to do this, but it's like, eh, and it's throwing some shade at you, right? It's saying like, this is not necessarily a good thing because it could crash, right? Um, so this is how we can get this particular uh, use, unsafe use of null past the compiler. And you'll see that I had to do this ugly syntax in order to get this to work. Um, now what's going to happen when I run this code? It's going to crash. Um, you know, it's, oh wait, hold on. I think something else happened here that's strange. Um, oh, okay, that, that, that's a different issue. But but this is this is being caused by this this null pointer exception, right? That in fact created in the code. Um, and so you know, again, not not good, right? Um, if I modify this to uh, use the, the null safe operator, uh, this should this should work fine. Right, it'll compile, and when I run it, it's also going to print null. Right, this should print a null pointer exception. I'm not exactly sure why it's why it's not printing a null pointer exception. It works fine this way, right? But if I use this uh, this null uh, uh, sorted of null null operator, I think there's some other problem with my environment that's causing this to happen. But the code is in fact crashing, right? And so I told Kotlin I'm doing something unsafe, and I know what I'm doing, and it turned out that I didn't know what I'm doing, right? And uh, as a result, the code crashes. Um, so, you know, in our playgrounds, we, we lump these errors together, the compilation errors and the runtime errors, um, but they are, they are totally different, right? So anything that we can do as developers, as creators, uh, as programmers to avoid runtime errors, we try to do. Um, one technique is to, you know, use modern languages that provide us with more safety. And Kotlin is a great example of a language that does that and is really designed to help developers write better code. There are other things that we do. We'll talk about software testing. So when you run a program, like when you run an app from a reputable company, that's not something that someone just built yesterday. Um, typically any app built by a large or even a medium size or even a small company goes through rigorous, exhaustive testing before it's released to the public to make sure that it doesn't have bugs or it doesn't have problems. Um, because again, everybody knows how we react to software that crashes. You know, you download the app, you install it, you run it, it crashes, you uninstall it, right? You look for something else that solves the same problem, right? People have very little patience for buggy software. Um, and so, you know, there's all this stuff that's done in, in software development organizations Hey, dogs here. Uh, to to avoid crashes, however possible. And one of the ways that we do that, one of the tools that we have at our disposal, is to use a compiler um, that helps us check for problems and moves those mistakes to compile time 
rather than runtime. So runtime mistakes, terrible, awful, no good. Compile time errors, fine, right? Things that we can fix easily, adjust our code. Um, so anything that we can do to transform runtime errors into compile time errors is worth it 100%.